Melbourne is set to see its biggest ever public demonstration. 150,000 expected to turn out to protest for industrial relations changes seeking higher wages. Let's uh, bring in our Taking Stock panel tonight. We've got with us Scott Phillips from The Motley Fool and Shivani Gokul from The Remarkable Woman. And uh, good evening to both of you. Thanks for joining us once again. Very fun last time. Um, Scott, I think this brings into focus uh, the issue of wages, which we talk about quite seriously in terms of economic statistics. We but do. it goes to the sentiment issue that we have across Australia at the moment too. People are feeling it, aren't they? Yeah, you're right. It's been a very long time since we've had real increase in, in wages in Australia. Particularly, you know, we've had a minimum wage case go through relatively recently and it's starting to filter through but it's been a long time coming to your point about sentiment too the other thing is well not only have we not had big wage increases in total but inflation remains reasonably low and I do think sometimes we'd rather have a 4% wage rise in a 5% inflation world than a 1% wage rise and no inflation it just yes. feels like we're getting more money and so there's that sentiment component of I'm not really getting paid more than I was a couple of years ago something is wrong here. Hmm. Shani, you know a lot about the workplace and how things go there. Uh, 150,000 people protesting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, is that the best way to, to let someone know that you're not happy with what's going on? <laughs> Well, there's certainly power in numbers, right? 150,000 friends? Get yeah, together. that's quite a lot of numbers. So they'll certainly succeed in raising awareness and getting someone's attention. But I think it's really important that you keep the outcome in mind when you do a protest like this. Um, and, and just remember that you may get, you know, you may get an additional raise, you may not. But also, you need to educate yourself. And when we talk about, you know, um, the protest around industrial relations, I think what's really interesting that's happening here is that there isn't a lot of talk or a lot of clarity right now around what is the industrial relations policy from the left and what is it from the right. So you've got the unions bringing it, you know, 150,000 people mm. there to say, mm. here is our policy. What do you compare it against? Mm. So th there's some danger here around some groupthink and there's some danger here around, you know, a good common compromise for what's best for the workers and the unions, you know, negotiating with business so they can actually get something that is effective. Otherwise, we can just have a great day of disruption. We've got to be careful there. So I think about, too, about what you're trying to achieve. You know, it's easy to say, OK, higher wages. And a lot of people, look, they're getting us talking about it, right? So to, to Shivani's point, weight in numbers absolutely matters. It raises it in the public consciousness. It makes it a news story. It makes it a political story. So tick, tick, mm -hmm. tick on a mission accomplished. But then what exactly do you want as the outcome? Now, we've got to say higher wages. OK, well, that's something. But then what specifically are you looking for? And the more specific you can be, even with a protest of that many people, the more specific you are, the better the chance of actually getting that, or at least drawing attention to a specific objective and then focusing on that point. The more broad you are, the less specific, the harder it is for you to get what you want and even to make those in power who you're protesting against respond mm -hmm. specifically. Mm -hmm. Higher wages, well, yes or no. OK, but is it, well, I want this much more or this much mm -hmm. per hour or the minimum wage got by that much? Mm -hmm. That makes it a really specific point and that's where the conversation, the argument can be had. And we can uh, talk about this um, in our own uh, personal negotiations with uh, our employers uh, individually, I suppose, that is, yes. is, is all relevant, exactly what you guys mm -hmm. are talking about. Shivani, I know we're talking about that a little bit later. Um, I guess when you say we, we're drawing attention to industrial relations, we're not talking about it much because we're talking about ex-leaders and ghosts of the past, <laughs> I feel. Uh, you know, there's been uh, Turnbull, Rudd, Abbott, Gillard, uh, they've all been back in frame. Uh, let's talk about it in the context of maybe when top talent leaves a company. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do that? <laughs> yeah. Is there a right way and a wrong way to do it, guys? Yeah, look, there, there definitely is a right and wrong way. It's, it's really interesting when we talk about, you know, um, ghosts of the past and, and so forth. Um, when you do leave a company, first of all, it's really important that you don't go out and, you know, burn all your bridges along the way. You know, keep your integrity about you, have some values and make sure that, um, you know, you, you maintain those relationships. Because think about it this way, no one's really going to want to rehire you if they think that you're going to take them down all guns blazing the moment that you leave. Mm. So I think it's really important that you show your integrity, but also think think about the internal company rather than just the external communications as well. So take care of your people, think about change management, think about communicating, you know, um, to the media as well as, you know, to to, um, to all the different departments as well. And, um, and and have a think about, you know, processes and succession plans. There's certainly some a lot of missing blocks that um, haven't happened. Okay, so you wouldn't unload on your ex-colleagues in a new book, <laughs> no for example? Or, or, or go to New York yeah. for six weeks while they ask me to help out. I just, I'm over there having yeah. a holiday. That's one way to do it. Oh. I, 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 the only benefit of being an ex Ex-Prime Minister right now, you've got plenty of company, right? There's, there's the Ex-Prime Minister's oh, yeah. Union is all of a sudden a much, much bigger thing. There was a time when there weren't that many around. You know, the, the living Ex-Prime Minister's Club was, was pretty small. It's expanded meaningfully in the last couple of years. Maybe, maybe there's, there's Ex-Prime Minister's Union. Uh, they can go and negotiate <laughs> as a group. <laughs> <laughs> what about the 
the expectations of the employer on the departed um, staff member, if we can continue that uh, sort of thing going? I mean, there was a lot of talk that Malcolm Turnbull should have endorsed mm -hmm. Dave Sharma. I mean, can you really have any say over what somebody who's no longer working with you um, does or says about the company or new, you know, new incoming people? Mm. Again, it depends on the person and it depends mm. on, on their integrity, their, their dedication to the role. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm certainly not, you know, um, quashing, you know, um, Turnbull's integrity or anything like that. But what I... What I'm not talking about them. Yeah. But I think it's really important that you take that into account, you know, in, in your recruitment process. Yeah. How dedicated have they been mm. when they've been, um, you know, transitioning out from another company? And, um, and how protective have they been of their people? Have they tried to mm. steal clients? Clients over, for example, we know that happens from mm. time to time, or, or people over. That will give you a really good indication if when I hire this new person, mm. it, you know, fast forward three years, six years, ten years down the track, how likely are they mm. to take care of my people and manage communications and have a, a new person come in, but also, you know, endorse the next person, for example, as you said. That will, you know, the history will dictate mm. that of that person, mm. I think. Mm. It's also to a question of, you know, to some degree, the way you leave, how you leave, what you do, it, it's very rare that's not an, you know, an extension of how you've been when you've worked for the company anyway. And so it's one of those things where the reputation you've created, fostered over a period of time for a particular employer or in a particular lodge, for example, if you're living there, uh, the opportunity for that to kind of you know, show through, it's very, very rare. You're, unless you've had a complete brain snap or you're, you're, you're intent on, to find this point, burning bridges almost out of spite, there's every chance that what you've done on the way through the business is the way you'll leave it either way. And so your reputation is going to follow you to the next role, to the next opportunity. We'll see where Malcolm Turnbull turns up. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that, 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 is, that is always going to be the case. So it's how you can actually solve while you're employed plus as you leave. Um, I was thinking earlier about how to transition into this next talking point that we've got. Um, <laughs> Wonder Woman has taken out the top spot in terms of uh, the favoured superhero yes. of, of children. Ah. Isn't, isn't that amazing? I mean, there, there is no transition there, but it is uh, a fantastic it's story. Awesome. Segway. Uh, segway. Thank you very much. Um, Shivani, what do you think? Look, I, I'm delighted. I'm mm. delighted on, on so many levels. Um, first of all, when I was growing up, I was playing with Barbie, and I don't think that she's any kind of role model for me or, or any girl, because she's, she's basically saying we should eat nothing mm. and, uh, mm. <laughs> um, and, and only you know, survive on, on you know, how great our hair is and how well our makeup is done, whereas Wonder Woman is, 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 is a superhero. You know, she's out there saving lives. She's a leader. And when you've got these young kids, boys and girls, that are playing with Wonder Woman, and what was so fantastic about this piece of information was that even boys are purchasing yeah. Wonder Woman. Yeah. So that generation of kids, they're going to grow up and they're going to go into the workplace and they're going to say, you're a Wonder Woman. You know, when, when I see you, I think you're capable of everything. And it's these subliminal things that come up as you grow up that will give you those beliefs. So I think it's fantastic. Um, I also think it has a little bit to do with the fact that Wonder Woman was by far a much better movie than Batman <laughs> mm. as well. Uh, <laughs> but it also said so much, you know, for, for the movie industry as well, didn't it? It said that, you know, a woman can have a superhero lead and that movie, that movie rather, is going to do incredibly well. You don't need to have a woman just be the love interest of the male hero. She can be her own superhero. Although, as a parent buying dress-ups, like, sometimes you still see the Wonder Woman and the Superwoman dress-ups and they've still got the tiny oh. short skirt. Yeah. And like the picture, even for a six-year-old, I saw one the other day, even for a six-year-old, the packet had like, you know, it was, mm -hmm. it was like a grown woman look about it. And it was really creepy to still see that. Like, yeah. yes, that's all changing, but the dress-ups are just mm. gross. I, I think that's what, what, what I like. Well. Yeah, what, yeah, what I like yeah. about the Wonder Woman thing these days, the, the modern incarnation, at least maybe not the dress up, is. I think the dress up is, is way behind. Right, well, we're kind of, you know, when we were kids, the, the Wonder Woman version was it was the invisible plane, the lasso, and kind of almost, it, it, there was nothing kind of serious or meaty or kind of chunky about the, the, the role or the person or the yep. kind of the, the, the battles that, that she was in. It was almost, you know, ancillary to, she was, you know, as well as Wonder Woman. This case, to Shivani's point, it was, it was the main role of the movie. You see a really strong, powerful woman being successful in, in a very, you know, uh, it's it the same sort of role that a, a male superhero would be playing. Yep. I think that's really, really important. It's not feminised to the point where, you know, it's, it's almost incidental. Yes. It's a really chunky, meaty, really proper role saying women can be successful, can be powerful, can be, you know, these characters and fantastically, now mm. they've become the most favoured yeah. mm. you know, superhero, showing that it gets right through to the kids, which is super important. Yeah, not only was uh, Wonder Woman at the top of the list, but of mm. course the only woman on the list at all, and you know, beating up Batman, Superman, Iron Man, all these man type of things. So mm. yeah, does it open the floodgates? Are we going to see a whole lot more superhero women hitting screens? 
Well, I think so, and, and I think that, you know... Is Elsa is... counted as a superwoman? That's the only I thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, that's I, everywhere. I think she Brooke, is Brooke, let go. pretty super. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you just won, won the night. You won the night. Oh. Actually, we've got, we got one more topic before you guys uh, got to, have to uh, go. Uh, Walmart has said it's going to be saving $20 million every year by switching... Floor wax brands. Easy as that. <laughs> they switch the brand of floor wax, they save $20 million. Do you think all businesses have a, a secret or hidden way that they can save big? Man, talk about scale. This is awesome. And it really does go to show, you know, when people actually look at what you're spending, how you're running your business, what you're doing, there's a heap of opportunity. Then it helps your Walmart, right? So you're the world's largest retailer mm. by, a, by a, fun, a factor of two or three times. So, you know, you've got to be that big to save that much money. I don't know that the local corner store near me would save anything like that yeah. with their floor wax, but it is. It, it's, it's that kind of idea that if you look through your business, we all think about the top line, we all think about the big costs. You save 20 million bucks by changing floor wax. They also changed light bulbs. They changed in their stores a few, well, a few years ago now, all of their light bulbs. They were the major driver in the US to go away from the old incandescent light bulbs to the LEDs. Mm. And they did it in their stores and they put the, the, um, the sections in there on the shelves. And it drove the entire US because their, their volume was so enormous. Mm. It literally made the entire thing economic for suppliers to all of a sudden start making LED bulbs at scale. It just it mm. goes to show what you can do if you make those big changes. It's an amazing story, isn't it, Shivani? What did you think? Is there money hiding in all of our businesses? <laughs> yeah, look, first of all, totally agree with Scott, Scott's point there. I mean, it is a testament to their yes, scale. Yeah. But there is so much money hiding in every business, no matter how small or large or Walmart you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, you know, a couple of great examples there is, are you using Dropbox and Google Drive? Are you paying for those two subscription fees? Are you using, you know, Word, for example, subscription? And then at the same time, you've got, you know, you can use Gmail and therefore you could use Google Docs as well and um, Google Sheets and all that sort of stuff. So there is inefic inefficiencies rather everywhere. And I would challenge every leader and every specialist and every business owner right now to have a look at their processes mm. and have a look at how much duplication is there. Because I can almost guarantee you there is duplication at least one area of your business and that could save you a whole bunch mm. of money too. So you may not save as much as Walmart, but you <laughs> probably save something. Shivani Gopal and Scott Phillips, thank you guys as always. Great to have you on Taking Stock. Thank, thank you. you. And here on Your Money Live.